Psoriatic arthritis is a complex condition that affects many people around the world. It's important to understand what it is, how it manifests, and its broader implications on health and well-being. In this video, we'll explore psoriatic arthritis in detail, starting with its definition and moving through its effects beyond just the joints. What is psoriatic arthritis? Psoriatic arthritis is an inflammatory arthritis affecting the joints and connective tissue and is associated with psoriasis of the skin or nails. Occasionally, psoriatic arthritis may occur in the absence of skin disease or there may only be an insignificant rash which may not be noticed. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, or NICE, has defined active psoriatic arthritis as having three or more tender joints and three or more swollen joints in adults. Psoriatic arthritis may involve not only the joints in the sense of arthritis, but also the tendons surrounding the joints, leading to swelling of whole digits, known as dactylitis, or it may lead to inflammation of the entheses, which is called enthesitis. Psoriatic arthritis is a progressive disorder ranging from mild synovitis to severe progressive erosive arthropathy. 40 to 60 percent of patients with psoriatic arthritis develop erosive and deforming joint complications. Epidemiology. The diverse clinical manifestations of this condition have impaired meaningful research on epidemiology. The diagnosis can easily be missed or overlooked. Psoriatic arthritis is a chronic seronegative inflammatory arthritis affecting 20 to 30 percent of people with psoriasis. There is not a strong correlation between the severity of psoriasis and the development of arthritis. The prevalence of psoriasis in the general population is estimated at 2 to 4 percent. Psoriatic arthropathy is more common in the Western white population than in other races. Men are more commonly affected by the spondylitic subtype with higher incidence of the rheumatoid pattern of disease among women. It is most common in middle age, 35 to 55, but may be seen in patients of any age. Risk factors. The possible risk factors for psoriatic arthritis include psoriatic nail disease, family history of psoriatic arthritis, HLAB, 27 obesity smoking, severe psoriasis, and psoriasis locations such as scalp lesions or intergluteal and perianal lesions. Symptoms of psoriatic arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis has variable clinical presentations with diverse articular and dermatological features and varied disease courses and outcomes. It is generally underdiagnosed. The characteristics of psoriatic arthritis include joint stiffness, pain and swelling, and tenderness of the joints and surrounding ligaments and tendons. Symptoms can range from mild to very severe. The arthritis tends to be relapsing and remitting. Psoriatic arthritis may present with inflammatory pain or peripheral joint swelling, especially affecting the knees, ankles, hands and feet, or dactylitis, which is swelling and tenderness of an entire digit, inflammatory or nighttime pain in the axial skeleton and at tendon insertions, known as enthesitis, especially affecting the Achilles tendon and or plantar fascia, is also common. Psoriatic nail disease occurs in up to 90% of cases. Enthesopathy affecting the Achilles tendon and plantar fascia is frequently seen. Tenosynovitis tends to affect the flexor rather than extensor tendons, which are both commonly affected in rheumatoid arthritis. Ocular involvement may be seen with conjunctivitis in 20 to 30 percent of cases, and anterior uvitis in about 5 percent. Sacroelitis and HLAB27 positivity are commonly associated with ocular disease. Rarely. Aortitis, similar to that seen in ankylosing spondylitis or reactive arthritis and secondary amyloidosis, are features of the disease. Skin psoriasis usually develops before joint involvement in the majority of cases, with a typical time lag of 5 to 10 years. However, about 20% of people with psoriatic arthritis do not develop skin psoriasis. An annual assessment for psoriatic arthritis should be offered to people with any type of psoriasis. Assessment is especially important within the first 10 years of onset of psoriasis. Psoriatic arthritis usually develops within 10 years of a diagnosis of psoriasis. 
A validated tool to assess adults for psoriatic arthritis should be used in primary care and specialist settings. Example, the psoriasis epidemiological screening tool, PEST. However, PEST does not detect axial arthritis or inflammatory back pain. Patterns of presentation. Symmetrical polyarthritis, often referred to as the rheumatoid pattern, is more common in women. Wrists, hands, feet and ankles are usually affected. Distal interphalangeal joints are involved rather than metacarpophalangeal joints, helping to distinguish it from rheumatoid arthritis, along with the absence of skin nodules and a negative rheumatoid factor test. Asymmetric oligoarticular or porciarticular arthritis affects hands and feet initially, with enthesopathy causing dactylitis, also known as sausage fingers. Usually up to five joints are involved. Lone distal interphalangeal disease can involve the nail and paranychial tissues, along with the terminal phalanx giving an appearance similar to an infection or traumatic hammer blow. This is usually seen in men. Arthritis mutilans is a relatively rare variation of distal interphalangeal disease. It involves resorption of the terminal phalanx, giving a telescopic digit appearance and the classical penciling cup radiographic appearance. Opera glass hand, a flexion deformity of the distal interphalangeal joints, is seen mainly in men with early onset arthritis. The spondylitic pattern, sometimes accompanied by sacroilitis, is more common in men. There is morning stiffness and limitation of back movement. Symptoms may be minimal and noted radiologically. Unlike ankylosing spondylitis, the vertebrae are usually affected asymmetrically and there can be unusual radiological appearances such as syndesmophytes, paravertebral ossification and fusion of vertebral bodies with calcified intervertebral discs. The atlantoaxial joint may be involved with destruction of the odontoid peg and risk of subluxation. Juvenile onset accounts for up to one-fifth of childhood arthritis and usually starts as a monoarthritis, but the distal interphalangeal pattern may be seen. Tenosynovitis affects up to one-third and nail changes are present in about two-thirds. Epiphyseal involvement can affect growth and sacroiliitis may occur. Simultaneous onset of rash and arthritis is more common than in adults. Differential diagnosis, features that distinguish psoriatic arthritis from other forms of inflammatory joint disease include the pattern of joint involvement, such as distal interphalangeal joint involvement, the swelling of an entire digit, known as dactylitis, the presence of enthesitis and the absence of rheumatoid factor or anticitrullinated antibodies. An important subgroup of patients with psoriatic arthritis has inflammatory spinal disease or spondylitis, which looks similar but is not identical to ankylosing spondylitis. Other forms of arthritis that may be difficult to distinguish from psoriatic arthritis include osteoarthritis and gout. Diagnosis of psoriatic arthritis. There are no clinching confirmatory tests. Clinical and radiographic impressions are often sufficient to make the diagnosis in the presence of a classical rash. ESR and CRP will often be elevated. RRF is usually negative, but 5-10% to of the general population have positive RF, so its presence should not be used to rule out psoriatic arthropathy. Other autoimmune markers, such as anti-nuclear factor, do not have any discriminatory value. It is not unusual for serum urate to be elevated in the acute phase, and gout may coexist with psoriatic arthritis. Synovial fluid aspirate should not show evidence of any crystals. However, the white cell count, predominantly neutrophils, is often significantly high. Serum immunoglobulin A is elevated in about two-thirds of sufferers, but must be interpreted against a background elevation affecting about one-third of those with uncomplicated psoriasis. HLA status may aid in diagnosis, but needs to be interpreted with care, usually in a secondary care setting. X-ray changes, classically associated with psoriatic arthritis, include mild bony erosion at the edge of cartilage, asymmetric erosive changes in the small joints of the hands and feet, dip or proximal interphalangeal involvement, more common than metatosophalangeal or MCP changes. Dip cases may have erosion and deformity with bony ankylosis of the joint and subluxation and erosion of the distal tuft of the distal phalanx. MRI and CT scanning may be more specific and sensitive in picking up subtle signs, particularly in the hands and feet, which indicate psoriatic arthropathy but need expert interpretation. 
MRI is useful for imaging the sacroiliac joint to detect inflammation and deformity. Management of psoriatic arthritis. Any person with suspected psoriatic arthritis should be referred to a rheumatologist for assessment and advice about planning their care. Non-pharmacological therapies, all with limited evidence, include physiotherapy, occupational therapy, smoking cessation, weight loss, massage therapy and exercise. Physical exercise helps to maintain mobility and reduce stiffness. Medications. In patients with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, monotherapy that addresses both skin and joint disease should be used in preference to multiple therapies, methotrexate, retinoids, and sorolin combined with ultraviolet A treatment appear to be most effective at treating skin and joints together. In patients with psoriatic arthritis, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may be used to relieve musculoskeletal symptoms. Local injections of corticosteroids should be considered as adjunctive therapy in psoriatic arthritis. Systemic steroids at the lowest effective dose may be used but with caution. Oral corticosteroids may cause a rebound exacerbation of skin psoriasis when withdrawn. Disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, or DMRDs. In patients with active disease, particularly those with many swollen joints, structural damage in the presence of inflammation, high ESR or CRP, and or clinically relevant extra-articular manifestations, treatment with disease-modifying drugs such as methotrexate, sulfasalazine, or leflunamide should be considered at an early stage. Anti-malarial-derived DMARDs, such as hydroxychloroquine, are usually avoided, as they may cause exfoliative dermatitis, worsening psoriasis. Biological treatments include itanocept, infliximab, adalimumab, and golimumab, which are tumor necrosis factor or TNF-alpha inhibitors. NICE recommends that itanocept, infliximab, adalimumab, or golimumab should be offered as an option for treating adults with psoriatic arthritis when the person has arthritis with three or more tender joints and three or more swollen joints. Additionally, at least two other DMARDs, given on their own or together, must not have worked. If the person's psoriatic arthritis has not shown a measured response at 12 weeks, then treatment should be stopped. Ustekinumab, a cytokine modulator, is recommended as an option, alone or in combination with methotrexate, for treating active psoriatic arthritis in adults, only when treatment with TNF-alpha inhibitors is contraindicated but would otherwise be considered or the person has had treatment with one or more TNF-alpha inhibitors. Surgery. Various surgical approaches are used to treat deformed joints for functional improvement. Chronic monoarticular synovitis can be improved by synovectomy in combination with physiotherapy. Complications of psoriatic arthritis. These include joint destruction, finger destruction disability, extra-articular complications such as eye disease and rarely aortitis, which causes aortic insufficiency. Psoriatic arthritis can affect people's ability to work and carry out daily activities, which can have a substantial impact on quality of life. Atlantoaxial subluxation with attendant neurological complications can occur. Psoriatic arthritis is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Prognosis. Psoriatic arthritis was initially considered to be a mild disease, but 40 to 60% of patients develop erosive and deforming joint complications, which not only lead to lower articular function and higher mortality, but also affect patients' ability to work and impact their social relationships. Aggressive treatment of early-stage progressive psoriatic arthritis can help to improve prognosis. If you found this video helpful, please... Like this video, leave a comment and subscribe for more informative videos on medical topics.